can't remember what I was Googling the other day, but it was something pumping related. And the search stuff that came up, the search suggestions were actually really interesting. And I was like, I should make a video just answering some of the most commonly questions that people are Googling. So let's jump on Google today and see if we can answer some of these questions for you. I wonder if you have any of these questions too. Let's see. If you're new to this channel, my name is Allison Tolman. I'm an IBCLC and a breast pump expert. And this is on this channel, we do all things pumping, right? <laughs> so a lot of you are combining pumping and breastfeeding or pumping and nursing, but we're here to talk mostly about pumping and support, specifically working moms in navigating all this pumping stuff because it's not as easy as you think, so. Okay, let's just start off by typing in Pumping for working. That's good. Okay. So check this out. Pumping for working mothers. Pumping schedule for working mom. I know that's a really common question because I've made a whole other video on this one. And I remember for that one, actually, I did something similar. I went on Pinterest and looked at all of the Pinterest pumping schedules for working moms, which was really interesting because a lot of them were good in theory, but not the best practically. <laughs> and I, I find like pumping schedule is like one of the easiest things to tackle because it's like, well, you gotta pump every two to three hours, just like map that out while you're at work and you're good to go. It doesn't always work that way. And just because you have a great pumping schedule doesn't mean that you can get the milk out, that you're pumping efficiently, that you can find the motivation to continue doing that long term. Actually, this is kind of what happened to me in my pumping experience as a working mom. I had a dynamite schedule, had my own office, I had everything going for me. Um, I was even trained as a, a nurse and a lactation counselor at that point. And it just didn't work, which was really frustrating. And I made a video, I'll post a video there and down in the description for you. But yeah, so here's what it says. Usually every two to three hours if your baby is between birth and six months, three to four hours if six months and older. Again, that's like really generic advice and, and that's good advice, but it really depends on your milk supply and your milk storage capacity and how all of these things play together in your pumping schedule, what kind of pump you're using. And so I can see where that's a really common question. Let's type in breast pumping. Okay which I know is kind of a weird way to phrase that, but it's a really Googled term. <laughs> so breast pumping schedule, first thing that comes up. Breast pumping tips. Actually, we just did a mini series where we talked about like specific professions. So nurses, teachers, doctors, why oh, is that all I can think of? Work at home moms, corporate offices, and kind of gave tips specific to those workplaces because they are pretty different. Your jobs are, you're, they're different. <laughs> Right, so the whole series on that, I'll link that for you. Best pumping bra. Okay, this is a good question because there's a lot of pumping bras out there. Again, it kind of depends on your chest size and which pumps you're using. There are some bras specific for wearable pumps, which I know a lot of moms like, especially those of you who have really mobile jobs, nurses, teachers, doctors, those tend to really utilize the wearable pumps. And we actually have a webinar on the best breast pumps for working moms where I dive into a little bit more unwearable pumps. I'd love to see you there. But it's not as <sighs> wearable pumps. I should do a whole nother video <laughs> on this one because I love and I hate them. The idea is great. We gotta be hands-free pumping. We need more innovation in this area. But sometimes they don't empty as effectively as a more traditional pump. And when you're relying heavily on a breast pump to maintain your milk supply, like you are when you're a working mom, it has to be efficient and it has to work well and it has to take out the milk that it's there or your milk supply will suffer. So that was a long way to talk about pumping bras, <laughs> but there's a few links and coupons on our website too for some of our favorite pumping bras. Breast pumping at work. This, I'm, I'm telling you, more moms are doing this than you think. And this is actually specifically what I focus on and me and my little team do. We have a program called Pumping for Working Moms. It's specifically designed for moms who are combining breastfeeding and pumping, really looking to pump fast and efficiently at work and manage your milk supply with the use of a breast pump while you're combination nursing. So if that's something you're interested in, there's a link down below. I'd love to talk to you and see if this is a good uh, place for us to work together. Breast pumping laws by state. That's also interesting. There are some federal laws here in the United States on what an employer does need to accommodate you to do at work. 
they have to allow you to pump. They have to allow you a space that is not a bathroom to pump. There's a lot of other laws that go in there. And then sometimes states have additional laws. They always take whichever law is more lenient. So your state might have some additional protections for you, which is really cool. Breast pumping before birth. If you're pregnant, comment down below and tell me how far along you are. Have you considered pumping before birth? This is an interesting topic because... Well, first you should always clear it with your healthcare provider, obviously. Using a breast pump can be a way to induce labor, right? And so we have to be a little bit careful there. I find a lot of times if you're just expressing colostrum or looking to do some of that stuff before birth, your hands are really the best way to do that. Those small quantities just get lost in, in a breast pump anyway. So be careful there, but um, especially if you're overdue or something, it can be a nice way to... <laughs> Get things moving along. Let's see, milk supply and pumping. I know milk supply is just <laughs> like this huge loaded topic. Honestly, everyone that comes and applies for our program and needing help and wanting to work with me, they have milk supply questions. This is just, you know, what it is. And then when you add in pumping on top of that, it just becomes more complicated, especially if you're combining it with breastfeeding. So what are some of these things? Milk supply, low pumping. This is really common and there's a whole other video I'm gonna link for you called low milk supply versus low pumping output. Those aren't always the same thing. So just because you're not able to pump a lot of milk doesn't always mean you have low milk supply. Sometimes it's a pumping problem and we're just not, we're not using the pump appropriately or effectively. It's a totally different skill set than nursing. It's just, it's crazy. Milk supply after pumping. That's an interesting one. What actually is to be expected after pumping or, or after you feed? And if you're pumping after that, what should you actually get? That's an interesting question. Hopefully your baby's eating well. And if you have a kind of like that just enough for milk supply, which I love to see, hopefully there's not a lot left in there. If you're getting a lot of milk after feeding at the breast, you either have an oversupply or your baby's not doing a very good job at the breast. You can kind of tackle that way. It also, uh, it's just, it's so complicated. It depends on how far postpartum you are. If you're like two weeks postpartum, you got oodles of milk, right? You're gonna have to, <laughs> tons of milk. If you're six months postpartum, it's gonna look a lot different. So it changes a lot, which is why I really like to work with moms long-term more than just like a one-time consult because stuff changes and you have more questions and I wanna be there to help. Okay, how to increase pumping milk supply. Oof. Here's another question right under, does pumping at night increase milk supply? Can pumping affect milk supply? Pump settings to increase milk supply. Oh man, that's a lot. <laughs> okay, so yes, pumping at night, feeding at night, all of those things will probably increase your milk supply. You have the highest levels of prolactin in the night. So that can be a really nice thing. What I focus on a lot is really balancing that science and the practical. So we know that expressing milk at night is great for your milk supply, but there comes a point, especially for working moms, where that just becomes infeasible. <laughs> you have to sleep, especially if you're working and balancing all of these things. So then we kind of have to weigh the pros and cons, see where your milk supply is currently at, what's your schedule during the day is like, what other barriers in place for you. Night feedings are my favorite to cut out first, but really before three months, it's, we, you just have to, we, we have to do it, right? And then after that, the longer you can go, especially if you're struggling with milk supply at night, that is a nice time to express milk. So, but I always like to cut it out as soon as we can. A lot of moms want their sleep. <laughs> so pumping can absolutely affect your milk supply, both positively and negatively. I think we think a lot of the positive effects of pumping on a milk supply. So if you're struggling with low milk supply, you know, just pump after you feed the baby or add an extra pump in during the day, working on supply. But pumping can actually decrease your milk supply too, which I don't think we think about as often. If you are not removing the milk that is already there, um, especially if you have an established supply, like if you've been feeding your baby at the breast and they're doing fine, they're gaining weight. Well, like this is what I see a lot with working moms. They're doing fine. We go back to work, we start pumping during the day and feeding at night, and then all of a sudden we're not pumping in enough milk for the baby, so then we're having to supplement, but they're still okay on the weekends. Eventually they start to not be okay on the nights and weekends because now ineffective pumping has actually decreased our milk supply. So. I I see it both ways. And I don't think we talk about enough how pumping can decrease your milk supply if you're not doing it correctly. If we're not removing the milk 
both fast and efficiently. There's a lot that goes into pumping too, like this one, pump settings to increase milk supply. That, I mean, I actually, I'm gonna click on that and see what you get because there are so many breast pumps. I don't even know how you could give like a generic answer to that question. Changing the speed of the pump from stimulation to milk removal to expression every five minutes while pumping. This may stimulate more milk production. Eh, okay. <laughs> I choose power pumping to increase your milk supply. Maximizing settings. 10 weight. It's just, <laughs> it's just a lot. Let's see what Healthline has to say. Who do not specialize in lactation or pumping? This person that wrote it is a PA. Okay. Pump more often, they say. Pump after nursing. Double. Who's not double pumping? Use the right equipment. What does that mean? Okay. Try lactation cookies and supplements. That's how I feel about that one. Maintain a healthy diet. Don't compare yourself to others. Relax. Look at photos of your baby. Talk to a lactation consultant or doctor. Okay. Okay. <laughs> we started this conversation on settings to increase milk while pumping. Okay. As you know from watching videos on this channel, there's a lot of breast pumps out there and they all have different settings and different cycle speeds and stuff. So this initial suggestion of changing the speed, you know, going back and forth from stimulation to expression mode is actually a, a good idea. And I did a video on tips to getting a letdown faster. And that was one of them was to kind of go back and forth. We're trying to, you know, stimulate a letdown, express that milk, and then stimulate another letdown. So I think that's kind of the intention behind that suggestion. It's going back and forth. Let's get more letdowns and then we can maybe get more milk out. In turn, we'll make more milk and up it up it up and everybody's happy. So that's that's not a bad idea. I think without the context and without the understanding of what you're trying to do, just going back and forth on your settings is not like the end all be all answer. I, I don't know. I feel really strongly that we need more understanding and education so that you can better understand your breasts and your milk supply and what's happening to you so that you can troubleshoot things on your own. And that's the main focus of our Pumping for Working Moms program. I don't want you to have to rely on me or another professional forever to meet your goals. Anytime you have something little change, I don't want you to have to pay more money, make more appointments, all of these things to figure out what's happening. I really enjoy teaching mothers the, the basics that you need to know to, to understand stuff like this, to know, okay, so I'm having a little dip in my supply. Is this normal? Is it not? What are the steps to fix this? Is it pumping related? Is it nursing related? All of those things. And all of those things are laid out inside of our program. Not only that, but there are experts like me inside there. And it's great. I love answering those really specific questions. We can have so much higher level conversations when you already understand all of the basics of not only pumping and breast pumps and your milk supply, but then tackling it all back to work. So the questions we get inside of our program are awesome. I love them because they're just on this next level. We're not answering, you know, really basic understanding questions because they're all educated and they all, you know, I've taught them the basics, the even some more advanced techniques. I just, I've really found this model of teaching mothers how to troubleshoot things on their own as a very effective solution. So then when you Google something and you see, you know, examples like this, you know what to do with it. You know what you're trying to do. It's not just we're switching settings. We're actually trying to induce another letdown. And so... That was actually an interesting example to, to kind of advocate for more education, more learning, and more support for pumping parents. So if you want to learn more and you want to just like be your own expert and really dive into it with me, I'd love to talk with you. My team is waiting to uh, have a call and just like get to know you and see if it's a good fit. We don't like enrolling people that don't need what we have. <laughs> so we just like to do those application and screening calls to make sure you're investing your money in a good place and that we actually have what you need. And if you don't, we'll tell you because that's just the business that we're in. So I hope this was helpful, just kind of an overview of a lot of the common questions that I see and that Google sees. If you like this style of video, let me know in the comments if you want to do more. If you prefer more topic-based and specific videos, let me know that too. But I hope to talk with you soon and happy pumping.